today in this video um, and it may take a few videos to do this that was a bee and I'm allergic I might as well show you the pumpkin I had cutworms getting you see the bee in there can you see it there are two bees in there um, I had cutworms getting the blossoms which is horrible and um, I've got these beautiful pumpkin plants and after the bees were pollinating the blossoms the cutworms were coming along at night and um, taking off the blossom and therefore ending my pumpkin dream so I sprayed uh, the plants with neem oil last night which will kill all kinds of caterpillars or cutworms and this morning we have bee frenzy and that bee that just came after me was actually going after the hummingbird feeder. Um, okay, there's my warping area for looms. And in the middle, um, a little bit difficult to see, are two sticks. Now, this is the way to warp a backstrap loom if you're going to use string heddles. I have a three-foot front beam a three foot back beam and just so you know these vertical uh, garden stake type sticks are spacers so that there is room to warp around that you'll also note I have pencil marks on this one um, and you need to keep that in mind now why am I using a three foot loom well because you may want to make three foot wide string heddle fabric. Um, you can start with a much smaller stick if you want, um, but in my case uh, this is my second um, three foot loom. I have one made out of purple wood and this these dowels are cherry and if you think of a rigid heddle loom where you have um, also a back beam, a front beam, a lot of them are made out of maple. When you're making your own backstrap loom, you can make also do the same thing. You can make them out of any kind of wood you want. Um, I don't remember where or how I bought them, but these are three foot long <coughs> cherry dowels. And the other loom is three foot long purple wood dowels. Um, so you can get them and you can make yourself a very nice um, <clears throat> hardwood loom. And a hardwood loom, um, more so than like pine, will last a long time. So I have two three foot front beam and back beam. I have two sticks. They're set about um, almost two feet apart. Now what we're going to do, if you've watched my other videos, normally a rigid heddle would be here and I would be threading the warp through the heddle. But when you do it this way, I'm going to start by tying off to the front beam. I'm going to go up around these in a figure eight <coughs> over the back beam and back down through the sticks in a figure eight. Um, now, what I'm going to do when I'm done warping is there will be a loop around that stick and a loop around this stick, and I am then going to take three foot narrower dowels and put one through each of the loops around the stick. And that will give me two sheds. So I will show you how I'm going to do it. Um, one of the sheds, one of the groups of strings, is going to have string heddles and one isn't. Now I want to mention the pencil marks that you see on this dowel. Today I have, I'm, I'm only going to make a warp about 20 warps wide. Um, because that's what I need to do. But those pencil marks are on the dowel um, and it brings in 
what you would normally be deciding when you buy a rigid heddle. Rigid, I have a rigid heddle for the other three foot loom that I believe is a 10 den heddle. That means there are 10 warps per inch. Your pencil marks on this beam are similar to um, a gauge of weaving you want to do. Now on this one they're about an inch apart because then I can figure out how tight do I want the warp. So if I want 12 warps per inch I've got inch marks on here and then I can periodically check that I'm making it 12 warps per inch. The other reason you want marks on your back beam, even if it's a short one, is um, this is a little different from the very narrow belt backstrap looms. If I were going to warp this beam all the way across, it's uh, more similar to warping a Navajo rug loom because you want the warp to lay flat on the beam and you wouldn't gather it in a knot in the middle. Um, and so the second, in this case, back beam, there aren't going to be knots. So, but the, even if you have knots, when the second back beam goes up against this, the pressure between the two beams is going to have to hold all your warps in line without moving and shifting. Now, if you want to, you can put a piece of masking tape um, across the whole beam to hold your warps in place, especially at the beginning. But once you get going with this and you want a three foot wide fabric, you want all of your warps flat, straight, and where they're supposed to be according to your gauge on your beam. And the second beam that comes here is has to have enough pressure um, to hold them in place. And this is where a commercial dowel has a little bit of an advantage over uh, bamboo because bamboo is bumpy in places and you really need two dowels that are going to um, can be tied very tightly together. The same thing goes for the other end and where normally um, I can, and I might do it today too, um, I just tie the warp to the other end and then cut it and retie it after I've threaded a heddle. Today I won't be threading a heddle. So I can have all loops on that beam as well. And the same thing would apply for the other beam. Um, so if you picture a Navajo loom, and I have a video up about uh, warping a Navajo rug loom, you're doing the same thing only your two beams are, in this case, 12 feet apart. But you have to bring in a gauge, and I can talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, um, what you're actually weaving for, um, what type of yarn you're going to be using. All of this, it's just like picking out knitting needles or a crochet hook, only you're setting it up yourself. Now let's talk a little bit about the string heddles themselves because actually the reason um, I'm setting up that loom is to set one up with string heddles. This also, this is my pipe loom, this also has string heddles and it's warped. Um, on this one I was able to make uh, different um, gauge bars that hold the warp in place and um, it's set up now, it could either be for tapestry or for flat plain weave. But you will notice up here that every other um, warp string has a string heddle on it. And so when I gather those together and pull them, it creates a shed. Now you also need the opposite shed. So in this case, I use a weaving batten, but this is acting as a roll bar, which is called a roll bar. So if you pretend that I've put this batten all the way through, the other shed is formed by pulling the warp threads up, which allows the string heddles to go back. 
and there is my second shed. So this is the concept of string heddles. This has to be moved up out of the way. Um, so, and it's a little awkward with the camera in my hand, but so you move the, your roll bar up out of the way. You pull the string heddles forward and get a shed. Um, this is when you need three hands. I'll do it over here. So here's my one shed by pulling the string heddles forward. Then I move this down and pull this forward as a roll bar and there's my second shed. Then I move this up, I pull the string heddles forward and I have the first shed. So this type of loom is built with not any kind of a rigid heddle but string heddles. Now another loom that uses string heddles is an ankle loom, um, which I have one warped over here. Now in this case, these, the string heddles go there. So I work this way. The heddles are um, under here. So here's one shed by pulling all the, um, and I'm sure if you ankle weave, there's one shed, and then to create the other shed, you push this down opposite of the heddles. So you can see that in this case, the string heddles hold one uh, set of warp threads in place, and you physically move them, the other warp threads, either up or down. Um, similar, but a little bit different from this. So those are two examples of string heddles. Now, the other reason an ankle loom or something similar is a good idea, um, crochet thread, I find, makes the best string heddles. And what I do, um, and I don't know which, to, which it was on, I tie them all the same length. So you want to find something like this, um, a chair, the, you know, on the back of a chair there might be an, um, a five inch space and you can tie consistent heddles. Um, this is size 10 crochet thread. I tend to make about a hundred of them at a time and um, I, I actually do use my ankle loom and um, just keep tying strings the same length so that I always have string heddles available. Now as the roll bar, here are, here's a very fine gauge heddle, here is a, another clay heddle, and the clay heddle, this goes back to the warp and the um, marks on your beam, the clay heddle would be great for a bulky yarn this you would need a warp about the same weight as size 10 crochet thread so these you can look at pictures online um, if you're new to weaving but these are the two extremes of the gauge you're going to be picking this is very fine weave this is very bulky weave and this ties in with how many warp threads you want and that's why I made these copper wired, copper, well, they are copper wired sticks on the bottom that you can't really see that hold the warp. This one is set for sport weight. And um, there's a bump in my warp bar, but it will hold the warps basically where I want them. These are tension sticks, which you would add to any. Um, weaving that that you're using string heddles so you're kind of building a frame loom but you're doing it by using tension sticks warp and the front beam and the back beam holding the warps in place now um, on this loom I was using a batten for the roll bar here's another 
way to use a roll bar. And what you do is all the warp threads would be under this loop. So the roll bar is actually in one of the sheds. And you pull this forward or let it go back and pull the string heddles forward. Um, this is a commercial uh, doctor's office toilet paper core. And what I'm pointing out here is the diameter of your roll bar is going to give you the size of your shed. So my batten is about uh, two inches um, wide. That gives me a two inch shed. I have another purple wood batten that is about um, six inches wide. I could have a six inch shed. You can carve your own roll bar. Make it any diameter you want. So these are all things to think about when you're using string heddles. Um, and it seems confusing, but it isn't. And the ankle loom is the best example, or this one. Um, the strings, the string heddles, and a roll bar are replacing a rigid heddle. So here are really the components of a large backstrap loom. Two of the back and front beams are on the warping um, frame right now, but so there would be four cherry dowels. I have a three foot long shuttle, which is the next stick down, which you wrap the yarn around. Then is a weaving sword, which um, there are also two inches wide. You kind of could use it as a roll bar. Um, but it will go, it more acts like a stick to pull, to pack the yarn after you've uh, woven it. And then two regular three foot dowels to act as, um, in the beginning they will go through the loops of the warp to preserve the two sheds, and then they can be used as tension sticks. Um, so that's basically a cherry backstrap loom. But also, this is my 20 inch loom, and one of the things I do is weave Robin Hood arrow type bags for them so that they can um, hang on a doorknob or stand in the corner. The one big advantage to backstrap looms is that they don't need a table. But I have um, a total of nine backstrap looms right now and I'm going to be making their bags um, the ones that I've just put together out of tarp fabric and you really just sew a tube and if you want put a strap on it um, and it's a great way uh, with a tarp I could even write on there which loom it is and so I'll end up with a bunch of blue bags standing up but like this is the 20 inch loom it's completely warped I just grab it out of there hang it on a hook and I'm ready to weave the same thing can be done um, by making a simple bag for each loom out of um, tarp fabric or if you're making one really nice backstrap loom pick out really nice fabric and um, I on this one I wove a rectangle. I think it has a seam on it. Um, it looks like I sewed the short side. And then I added a belt as a uh, strap. And then it's like a backpack. You can throw it over your shoulder and take it anywhere you go. I mean, is there anything bad about a backstrap loom? I haven't found anything yet. Now this is where the math comes in with string heddles and it's mainly due to choosing your warp. Um, it's not the same as my other warping method with a rigid heddle and pulling loops through the heddle. Um, with this you have to be able to fit your warp ball of yarn around the back beam. So in my case the way I have it on a warping frame that's about an inch or so I have to squish a warp thing through. So with this method, if you're doing wide fabric, um, 
and again it's similar to Navajo weaving on a rug loom, you can expect that you may have to use small balls of warp that can go around your beam depending if I had two um, you know like a dumbbell stand and I could put the back beam on a dumbbell stand then it wouldn't come into it as much but the way that I have to do it right now um, I need to use smaller balls of warp that are going to go around the back beam and um, so with a wide piece of fabric when you're setting it up you will be um, using more than one it won't be a continuous warp and if it is you you know I don't know how you would do that unless you wind it into a skein and the skein goes uh, behind the back beam but um, in thinking about that today what I'm warping on that loom I'm only using 11 heddles that's going to give me 22 warp threads so um, now I'm looking at choosing my warp by footage the warping frame is set at 12 feet apart so I have to multiply um, 12 feet times 22 warp threads is 264 feet it adds up quickly let me do that again so 12 times 22 is 264 and then divided by 3 88 yards of warp thread so this is where your math comes in and you plan for your warp thread so now I'm waiting for new uh, cotton string warp to get here um, and I have a limited amount of that but I have plenty of crochet thread which is a thinner warp I can use a heavier yarn with it if I want to um, and I can also roll it into a small ball in my case and get it um, around the back beam so this is how you choose your warp material Navajo um, there's a website a rug a Navajo weaving rug website that sells wool warp by the cone if you're going to do this um, I forget the name of the store it's about forty dollars a cone but it's about sport weight and um, is white wool warp it's a really nice warp but on a backstrap loom there's so much twist in it that you end up um, when you fold the loom up or roll it up the warp tends to twist around a lot it's easier to use either cotton string or crochet thread but that's how you have to figure out I need 88 yards of warp to warp just 22 warp threads on that backstrap loom I may have just come up with a replacement for my warping frame which is more portable and might be easier to use all the way around now I'm, um, I'm, I've held on to this warping frame because it's worked so well in the last clip I said you know if I had a dumbbell stand well I do if I take these inexpensive lucets and push them down into the ground one at each end that's going to hold a beam and they each you need a handled one but they each have about four inch handles which means if I just shove them down into the ground they will hold a beam so if you don't want to build a warping frame these are five dollars a piece they're 3d printed um, these the wooden ones are more expensive you could get th two 3d printed lucids and use them as a warping stand you'd need four for front beam and back beam I'm going to throw something in here um, and interject some additional thinking this is backstrap woven worsted weight fabric you can see how that comes out now this is my bead loom 
and um, these are um, battens that I had carved from my bead loom. Now this particular bead loom, I'm not sure if you can find it anymore, there was a seller on eBay that was making these. Um, this is an Ojibwe bead loom that you can probably um, still find. This one is set up on dowels that you can put any length of dowel on it and so what I can do is use 36 inch dowels and make this a frame loom that will make a six foot rope or six feet of anything that you can then make into belts. It's also a bead loom. Both, and this is what I want you to think about. Um, think outside the box a little bit. Um, so here's a bead loom that I'm going to be weaving fabric on. And one of the reasons I made the battens is because I also would be using a roll bar and string heddles instead of a little rigid heddle because of the gauge of a bead loom. There are a hundred and fifteen warps, I think, possible on here. So yes, miniature weaving. And you can do it on an Ojibwe bead loom. Now this is how we're going to start. We're going to tie our warp to the front beam. I have made four little balls of crochet thread. We are going to go to the sticks and all we do is go around them like this. So um, on the outside of that one to the inside and the outside of that one. And you can push them down a little if it's easier. We then go to the back beam Push our warp through here and go back this way. We go to the outside and then to the outside again on the other one. And that is your figure eight. And you just keep doing that for the number of warp threads that you have. Now, um, if you've set it up like me and you're using small balls of yarn, when you get to the front beam, go around it. And if you run out of warp thread, all you do is end it or begin it by tying a new warp thread on at either the front or the back beam. And I'm sorry the shadow is in the way. So we go back up on the outside and the outside and back up around the beam. And because I have counted my warp, I know I need to do that until I have 22 warp threads. Okay, I have my 22 warps on there and there's a shadow from a tree behind me. Um, you can see how they go around the sticks and this is the cross. You will hear in weaving, preserve the cross. Now the, this is why we're warping it this way so that we automatically have that cross. What I've done is tie the second stick to the front beam and it looks like I have to get on the other side and I have um, the two beams now. These are ready for me to add a couple of keychain keychain rings on the end so that I can put any backstrap belt on there. And then on the back beam, I've done the same thing, only it's stacked vertically. And on both of them, I have a piece of tape holding the warp in place. Now, so you might be saying, look at this. She's got a three foot stick made of cherry, weighs a ton for skinny little warp. Um, it really is a way for you to get used to what you're doing. Um, that's why I'm doing it this way. 
not only because chances are you're only going to make one backstrap loom, but because this is going to give you perspective. So this is a total of 22 warps, um, and yet if you were going to warp a 36 inch dowel um, at 10 dents per inch, you would have 360 warps. This is how they make cotton fabric linen fabrics, fine fabrics in like Guatemala, Peru, and then they add pickups all through the thing and make it all designs. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So you need to have the visual of a three-foot loom to give yourself an idea of your own difficulty level. So I've done three foot wide fabrics, but I use worsted weight um, or bulky weight so that it goes faster. I've often thought that I'm going to put a 36 inch wide fully warped in cotton thread warp on a loom and add hand spun cotton to it every once in a while. Um, unless you do it every day, it's a huge project. So this done on this loom today is really to show you how far this can go but also how intricate or time consuming it can be if you do it completely traditionally which is like I said it in Guatemala or Peru so 360 warps for some people is nothing but then so you'd have half of that or 180 strength heddles. So that's why I did this on a three foot loom because that's about as big as it gets. And so if you use eight inch bars or 10 inch bars or 12 inch bars, you're keeping yourself within a certain boundary, but you're still gonna be thinking about how many warps per inch are in there and how fine or how bulky is my fabric. So it's really just a way of being aware of the entire craft um, that is why I set it up like this today. So now we have our cross. Lighting is terrible. Um, you have two choices. These are the dowels. You can stick a dowel in each one and lift it right off the stick or in my case what I'm going to do I'm going to use this as a roll bar I'm going to stick the roll bar right in this part and what I had done is um, punch some holes in it and I'm going to attach that roll bar right there so you can see what that does when I move that forward, that separates the shed. So now what I have to do, once I get that on there, I keep this stick in there and the heddles have to be able to go on the opposite warp threads. These right here, because these are going to need to be pulled up through that to make the other shed. But basically, when you're at this point, you can put two dowels through this and lay them on the ground. Um, you could tape them together and move the loom indoors or wherever you're going to be working and then add your string heddles to the correct warp. Okay, so here I've got the roll bar in place and I've got the warp thread spread out a little bit. Now on the white pipe loom, after I get a, um, a tension stick in, I would be grabbing the back thread to put a heddle on it. But if you look at the way this is, um, and you can spread them out, what I need to do is replace this stick with a heddle. I need a heddle on this one, a heddle on each of the ones that are on the top of the stick. 
because then when I pull the heddles up, I will be doing what the stick is doing right now. So when you do this, um, put it on a dowel, move them out, and put one heddle on each of the warp threads that needs to be on the top. Otherwise, if you grab one from the back and then remove the stick, it's on the top of the roll bar. Once you remove the stick, it would be on the top and you'll lose the cross. So you want to just replace the stick with string heddles. Now, to put the heddle on a string, you fold it in half. So there's on the first string, and we'll just lay that aside. Here's another heddle, and you have a loop. Here's the next top thread. And you just bring it around like this and fold it in half. And then you hold those in your hand, um, and when you get them all on there, you get a stick, you stick all of them on a stick, and then put a piece of string around this so they don't move off your stick. Okay, and now we are done. So we have taken this off of the two sticks we used to do the figure eight. I have attached the string heddles and I have them on a stick. And I put a little handle on there. It keeps the heddle uh, loops from going anywhere. And on a bigger project, you can then grab the handle. Um, and now I'm going to remove this stick and it'll look maybe a little sloppy. But there are my string heddles preserving that cross. Now normally um, heddle sticks are longer, thicker, bigger, um, and I just needed to secure them. Now your roll bar on such a uh, narrow piece will move around, but don't let that get to you. And I could have used a skinnier one but once you have tension on this loom, it'll actually just stay there. Um, so there is the way, and your heddles are going up. So that's the way to keep it um, facing up. The roll bar is a little heavy right now. But there is the way to put string heddles on a warp. Um, and now all you have to do, you can leave it like that. Um, put a belt on the front beam and put a string on the back beam to hang it and um, once you are set up and ready to weave you know that the handle on the roll bar which is a piece of yarn needs to go up and that your heddle stick needs to go up and on a wider warp, this wouldn't even be happening. It would all be just sitting there. But they tend to fall over like that um, when they're being set up. But that's how to do it. And there's a better picture of it. I set it up on top of the two sticks and spread out um, the warp a little bit. So you can see your string heddles will pull the other shed open and then of course you have your weft on a shuttle. I'll probably never get it to balance again. You have your weft on the shuttle which goes through one shed and then the other and you're weaving.